A question that I have is, you know, here we have a bunch of people who are passionate about this topic. What are the kinds of things that you think um, this community should be focused on right now? What, what are kind of big problems that you think we should be trying to solve? Yeah, this is a tough question, and I, uh, but it's, it's good because it kind of, I can hopefully provide a broad overview a little bit. And five, five steps here, but it'll be quick, I promise. Um, so uh, we think about this, this group is interested in innovation, right, the, by, by the name innovation and kind of the cutting edge of solving the, the most intractable problems. And um, there's, there's really, when we think about climate change, oftentimes it really comes, it starts with mitigation, which is really a re reduction in greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, not just emissions, but, but concentrations, bringing those down. So innovation and mitigation, and, and, and for most cases, that means low or no carbon energy sources as quickly as possible, um, and innovation in, in the energy infrastructure to make sure, especially in agriculture, industry, and, and uh, manufacturing, transportation, and uh, um, power generation, that we get as quickly as possible to, um, to low or no carbon infrastructure. The other piece of that, though, is energy efficiency, which is often, kind, is often sort of uh, overlooked when it comes to innovation. Uh, I'll just give an example. Uh, if we think about the, the rapid transition to, maybe not so rapid, but it, it seems rapid transition to EVs for the personal transportation industry. Well, we, can, we can take every single gas or diesel powered car on the road in Chicago and convert them to an EV, and, and that does have substantial benefit or we can improve the reliability and the accessibility of public transit, and now you're taking hundreds of cars off the road. Uh, and so that's a, a form of, of innovation and energy efficiency where we're just overall using less energy uh, as opposed to just changing the sources of energy. So that's in kind of mitigation. Also innovation and adaptation to climate change, which we know that we've already seen impacts related to climate change. We saw the wildfire air quality issues. We had two uh, over thousand year flooding events uh, last year in Chicagoland alone. Um, and uh, so preparing and, and, and improving our resilience to those types of extreme events is really important. So innovation in there. Um, the, the other three are equity, and I, and I, and I want to say that over all of these things, and having an umbrella of equity as far as making sure that, that um, every place, the most vulnerable uh, among us in Chicago, but across the, across the globe, are, um, are, are not left behind in the, in the push for, for resilience and climate change. That it's not just a resource grab where we have those who are able to uh, afford resilience or able to get it. So innovation and equity. But what I meant by the first mention of equity was just the, the availability of resources. Uh, and this is something that we've seen more recently, especially with the influx of federal dollars, is that there's a lot of work to do. And a lot of times, uh, especially small municipalities that I work with outside the Chicagoland area, they know exactly what they need to do. It's just there's no resources for them available because their sustainability manager is also the fire chief and the dog catcher and the mayor part-time. So that those that's, that really is a challenge. Uh, the availability of that equity is extremely important. Um, and then I knew I was going to forget my last one, but uh, as a list here, um, but Let's say a four, a four steps. Then. Four steps, I think, is good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just real quick. Uh, science. Uh, this is ADD, right? Working in, in full. Um, so science. You know, as a scientist, I'll just call out my 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 climate scientist here. A lot of times, we kind of are enamored with the problem. Uh, where, and and, and uh, what we've seen over the last 10 to 20 years of science, especially climate science, is a repeat of the same maps of just say the city of Chicago, right? To say this is the hottest part of Chicago. This is the, the place that gets flooded the most. And every single map looks the same. And when you go to the communities that are affected by those hazards, they say, yeah, yeah, we know that we're hot here. We need to fix it, right? And so for science, it's really need to transcend being enamored with the problem and, 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 and just measuring the problem and really making that science work for the solution. Uh, so innovation in science to make sure that that science can be used. Last piece I wanna, I wanna, I wanna make is just an example. Um, the, uh, anybody from Chicago Region Trees Initiative in the house or Morton Arboretum? Okay, yeah, okay, good. So I can, I can, I can shout out here. This is a great example of, of, I think, of exactly what I talked about from mitigation, adaptation, from science, and from policy and equity. We've seen those, those studies that say that these are the hottest, the south side, the west side of Chicago, those are the hottest parts of the city. And yet over the last 20 years, the majority of tree planting has been outside of those areas. And we know that tree planting from science is, is one of the best ways to, to cool urban areas. And so from the influx of federal dollars from making that equity available, 
Chicago Region Trees Initiative is now uh, distributing significant funds to the most vulnerable communities, the hottest communities in the Chicagoland area, to improve that tree planting. So that's how we go from science to mitigation adaptation of climate change. It's a great example, and it's really the innovation community that's pushing that. So sorry for the long answer. But no, that's great. That's a that. good framework. Those, those, thank you. All right, since you mentioned planting trees, I'm going to hop over to you, Erin, and the Nature Museum. So.